Hey there, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Skateboarding California. This episode is going to be a little review of some 187 killer pads, the Pro Knee Pads, compared to a lot of other pads that are out there on the market. Let's take a quick look at the 187 website and look at the marketing they have for their Pro Knee Pads. Now, if we come down here and check out some of the features, they have this V22 dual density foam. Now, that is apparently just kind of a marketing name for their dual density foam. It's not like a brand or anything, because if you actually search for this stuff on the internet, all the results are referring back to these knee pads. So <laughs> I don't think that this is an actual like special kind of foam. I think it's just what they call their foam. The next is this lock-in cap system, which you can see right here in their illustration. So most kneecaps on all the other brands attach just with Velcro. Now, the 187s are unique because in addition to the ordinary Velcro, they've also got this kind of loop that comes through and attaches to the cap. So in theory, that should make it even harder for the cap to fall off. So that's a cool kind of feature to have. And then right here we have lightweight, fast drying interior lining. I believe the lining appears to be some kind of Lycra or spandex or something like that. And then here we have seamless interior finish for ultimate comfort. That is another legitimate thing for them to call out because on most pads of all the competition, on the inside, there is a seam that goes across, and when you open that up, that's how you remove the foam. But on 187s, they actually put the seam down the side of the pad. So by eliminating the seam, I think, you know, that can make them a bit more comfortable. And then the rest of these features are things that, you know, pretty much all pads have. They're all made of nylon, they all have multiple panels, and they all have an open back design. So. That kind of gives you a good overview of the promotional things that 187 has on their website. Let's take a general kind of overview of the 187 pads so you can get an idea of what they look like up close and see all the features. So right here you can see some of the stitching right there. We got the nice double stitching on the panels. And right here we can see the top strap. As we spin around and look at the kneecap, these are actually kind of tiny. They're sort of, uh, they're probably the second smallest caps of all the pads that we're gonna review. And then here at the bottom, you can see there's some stitching right there. And you can also get an idea of what the fabric looks like there with the logo right over the bottom foam. And then if we look at the back side of the pads, uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is this bottom strap. Now. You can see this strap is extremely long. Um, I really like this design. The idea is that you just kind of pull it through this loop and you're supposed to cut off uh, the excess of the strap that you don't need. So nobody else really does that. I think that's kind of a neat idea. And the top strap is pretty plain, nothing really special about that. Uh, but here we can see the sizing tag. It tells you the size of the pads and whether it's the left or the right pad. So that's always useful because it can get confusing and you can forget which one is the left and which one's the right. And then here we'll take a look at the back straps. These are probably my, my least favorite back straps because they're kind of weird. Um, you can see here that the Velcro is actually just kind of hanging off the end of the back strap. Most of the competition, that neoprene backing goes all the way across, right? It comes all the way out here. And for some reason, 187 just kind of hangs the Velcro off the strap, which is kind of odd. The other bit that's strange is notice that on the inside of the back strap here on the neoprene, um, it's just plain. It doesn't have any kind of edge or stitching to it, whereas there is an edge and stitching on the top and bottom. So it looks kind of unfinished. Then right here on the side, we can see the pouch that opens up, and that's where you can remove the foam padding. And I think that's a pretty good feature because it does make it a little bit smoother there across the back and a little bit you know, more comfortable that way. 
So now let's take a look at the fact that uh, the top of these pads is not really articulated very well. You see here the foam, how it comes up to the very top of the knee pad. Okay, and if we kind of turn around and kind of try to move this piece, you'll see that there's a little bit of flex to it, but it's kind of difficult to move this top half. Now, on pads where that piece does move, that flexible articulating point is called a lame. Little history lesson for you. On medieval armor, the kneecap is called the poline, and the articulated parts above and below the knee are called the lame. So that's what that part is called on the knee pad. Allow me to illustrate the difference with these three pads. So here we see Protec pads. Protec pads have a lame at the top, which is articulated, and you can even see that there's a seam right here that allows for that articulation. S1 pads, they have no articulation at all. This is completely solid across the top, and if I kind of hold them sideways and try to bend it, you can see there's just no flex there whatsoever, so they don't have a lane. Now the 187 pads kind of fall in between, so there's no seam for any kind of lame or any sort of articulation, but you see that they do bend a little bit. So they don't bend as easily as the Protex, but they do have some bend, unlike the S1s. Why is that? When we remove the foam from the 187 pads, you can see that there is actually a seam on the top of this foam. So that's why they can articulate a little bit compared to the S1 pads, which are one big solid piece of foam. So let's put on the 187 pads and see how they feel. So let me undo the back straps here. And, you know, some people, when they put on pads, they like to sit down. Personally, I prefer standing. I just find it easier. So the first thing I'll do is put on the top back strap and then tighten up the bottom back strap. Then I tend to put on the top strap next just pull that around and stretch it out put down that velcro and then take this very long <laughs> very long bottom strap and loop it through and pull it around like I said I, I think this is kind of a neat idea and something the competition doesn't do uh, they don't make an extra long strap like that so now right here you can see how I was talking about it this pad doesn't really have a lame um, so it, when you straighten your leg out it's not articulating really well. It articulates a little bit because there's actually a crease in the foam. So they're a little bit more comfortable than like S1 pads, but they're not as comfortable as like a Protec pad. So you can see there as I'm bending my leg, when I have my leg curved and my knee is bent, then it feels really good and it fits really well because that goes with the curve of the padding. But once you straighten out, uh, there's like a little bit of pressure there above your kneecap and, you know, right behind where the logo is at. But as long as your knees are bent, then, you know, they're pretty comfortable. So, first impression, putting these things on, um, there's a little bit of a, a pressure point uh, below the kind of below the kneecap, um, that bottom piece of the pad, uh, that doesn't articulate very well. So yeah, a little bit of a pressure point down there. Not too bad though. Um, the top, the top has less of a pressure point than I thought there would be. Uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah, not the most comfortable, but uh, I would say the Pro, Protex are a little bit better. Uh, this is kind of between like Protec and uh, S1. I think S1s are the least comfortable. These are somewhere in between. So let's just ride around the pool. Just, just a normal skate. 
on flat ground and see, you know, as I bend my knees, I can definitely feel that that pressure point increases the straighter your legs are. So as long as you're actually skating and you're, you've got your knees bent, it's not too bad. Let's do a quick size comparison between all these leading brands of knee pads. So the first ones, way on the left-hand side, those are ProTech drop-in pads. They actually don't make these pads anymore, but I freaking love these things. I've ridden these pads for maybe about seven years or so, and that little chip that you see taken out of the cap, that happened about a month ago, and you know, in seven years of riding these pads and at least once or twice a week and skating in pools, you know, hundreds of times, hundreds of knee slides, they've held up really great. Now these pads right here, these are pro designed. Those are actually their BMX pads, but they still work really good for skating. And then next here we have ProTech pads. These are the new ProTechs, the ProTech Pro lines. And then here's the pads that we're reviewing right now. These are the 187s. And you can see from this image the good size comparison between all the pads. So like the Protex probably have the smallest of the kneecaps. And then here you can see the S1s and their size compared to the 187s. So this gives you a good idea of how big all these knee pads actually are which, if you're curious, is extra large. So every single one of these knee pads is an extra large, except Pro Design. Those are a custom size. Now, let's do what you really want to see. Let's actually ride these things. So let's give that a try. Let's, uh, let's roll around the pool and see how they feel when we're skating transition. The 187 pads are really nice when you're actually riding transition and you have that, you know, bit of a bend in your knees because then they're really comfortable. You know, the fact that they don't totally articulate, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal uh, when your knees are bent and you're actually riding. They feel good. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're definitely, they're definitely more comfortable when you're actually riding. Um, you know, when you actually have that bend in your knee then the bottom of padding is not digging into your shin as much so yeah not fantastic but not too bad let's measure the actual thickness of the foam on the 187 pad so here you can see this layer is around two centimeters maybe even a little bit more and the top kind of cap layer is it's yeah you know, it's really hard to measure this stuff simply because it's all curved and weird but it that's maybe close to another two centimeters as well so i would say this stuff is at least at least 40 millimeters thick if not more let's compare the 187 padding to the competition so this is the 187 pad and this is ProTech. So as you can see, the 187 is definitely thicker. This top layer is thicker than the D30. And I believe that the actual base kind of thickness is also just a little bit more, a little bit wider than, than ProTex. Comparing the 187 to the S1, you know, it's a little difficult to judge the thickness of the S1 because it's got so much kind of curvature to it. Uh, maybe if you kind of look at the bottom of it and compare those, you know, we can kind of see that way. But the thickness is fairly similar. I think the 187 is still a little bit thicker. And the S1 has about four different layers of foam. So you got the top layer, you got this, this layer, and then the memory foam, and then I believe there's another layer inside, and that's why they call that one four. Now, we can't really compare the 187s to Pro Designed because, again, I cannot remove the padding from the Pro Designed. But the Pro Designed, I believe, only has one layer of foam, but it is very, very thick. It's, it's probably like an inch and a half, maybe, so 
it's probably comparable to the Protec, although it is only one layer. But yeah, it's hard to compare it to the 187s. I do believe that the 187 padding is probably the thickest out of all of them. All right, so let's actually try a knee slide with the 187s and see how well they absorb the impact from, uh, from what we saw uh, looking at the padding inside of all these different brands. It looks like 187 has the thickest pads, so that doesn't necessarily mean they are going to be the most comfortable because, of course, the density of the padding has a lot to do with how well the padding works, but let's give it a try. Now, I admit an intentional knee slide like this isn't the same kind of impact that you would get in an accidental one, but it still gives you a good idea of how they feel. All right. Felt pretty good. Yeah. That definitely felt good. They stayed pretty stable. Um, I felt my legs move a little bit, but the pads stayed in place pretty well. I was honestly, uh, honestly a little surprised. Only because I, I really hate the back straps on these. I think the 187s probably the worst back straps in terms of design. So I was afraid that they wouldn't be all that stable, but uh, they were. So yeah, just because uh, just because the design isn't great doesn't mean that the pads are gonna suck. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I still I wish they articulated better, but uh, not too bad. You know, oh, it looks like. Looks like I did spread my my knees a bit. I can see here I was actually sliding on the padding and uh, not on the cap. So my knees were out a bit. That's interesting. But uh, looks like it still held up. So yeah, I don't know if that was uh, if that was my fault because I landed weird or if the pads actually moved on me. I'll have to, uh, have to play the video back, I guess, and uh, figure out exactly what happened there. Replaying the knee slide and zooming in a little bit there, it does look like this was kind of just an awkward fall, especially like you can see that my right knee is sticking out a little bit more, and it does look like I'm sliding more on the inside of the pads. So, I don't think uh, that the pads moved on me. I do think it, it was just a bit of an awkward fall, and that's why I wasn't completely sliding on the kneecaps. Let's take a look at how the 187 pads held up from the one knee slide. So, as you can see here, it looks like they weren't exactly centered on my knees. So, I don't know if this is my fault, that I didn't have them strapped down tight enough or that I just kind of angled my knees inwards. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of scuffing on the face of the pads. It's all in here. So clearly I was kind of sliding like this with my knees kind of bowed inwards. But the scuffing on the pads, you know, not too bad. I feel like the uh, kneecaps look like they're holding up pretty well, just as good as any other brand. Right here you can see that uh, we did get quite a bit of scuffing on the actual seam and we got uh, you know a bit of damage there to the threads that are holding the pad together from just one knee slide. So if we compare that to my old Protec drop-ins. You know, I've ridden these for years. I've probably done a hundred knee slides on these, and I probably had a lot of awkward, weird falls like I did on the 187s. And as you can see, I mean, none of the seams on these old Protecs have 
gotten messed up at all. Um, there's nothing damaged where any of the panels are sewn together. And everything on the Protex have held up really, really well. So to summarize the 187 pads, I came up with this little kind of ranking system where basically I numbered everything from 1 to 4 with all four brands, and the higher the number, the better. So from this, you can see that the 187s actually scored the lowest, but, you know, I feel like I've been very critical of the 187 pads throughout this whole review, and I want to make it very, very clear that I still really like these pads. I highly, highly recommend them. Because even though they did score the lowest, you have to remember that they scored the lowest among the four greatest knee pads on the market. So I personally plan to keep on using the 187 pads. You know, I feel like they're going to do a great job of protecting me when I'm skating. And I don't want to give the impression that like, oh, these things suck because they scored really bad. No, no, 187s are still really awesome knee pads. And if you have a chance to get some, I highly recommend them. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of Skateboarding California. This knee pad review. And hopefully you now have a better idea of, uh, you know, the options and the brands that are out there and what might work best for you.